My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting with his companions. When a man entered into the masjid and he offered two rakats, praying rather fast, he came and gave salams to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet والسلام, returned his salams. And then he told him, Irji' fasalli fa innaka lam tusalli. Go back and pray because verily you haven't prayed. So the man went back and he prayed again and came back and gave salams again to the Prophet. وسلم, and again, the Prophet وسلم, after returning the salams told him, Go back and pray. Because verily you haven't prayed. And he went back and prayed a third time and came back to the Prophet وسلم, who told him, go back and pray. Because verily you haven't prayed. After having prayed three times, he said, teach me because I don't know any prayer better than this. The Prophet وسلم, taught him what he needed to focus on in the prayer. Focusing on finishing and completing the movements on focusing on the essential components of the prayer, finding the tranquility in the movements. The reality, the sad reality of the prayer of many of the Muslims today is very similar to the prayer of that man. Many times we watch our brothers who come to the masjid and they pray so fast. When they're raising up from ruku', they don't even stand up properly. They're halfway up and they're already down in sujood. And whoever prays like this, his salat is not even valid. You see, many of the brothers who offer and pray the chicken prayer. What is the chicken? The chicken prayer, like the, you see how the chicken just plucks and takes the food really quick from the ground. This is how the brothers make sujood. It's a quick tap up and, and he tapped his head already twice. Allah Akbar and he's already back up standing in the salat. This is not prayer. This is a joke. If we really want our prayer to be accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we really want to benefit from our prayer, there are two essential things we need to focus on. The external prayer and the internal prayer. The external prayer that we pray in accordance to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that we properly establish the prayer and we pray it properly. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli." Pray as if you have seen me pray. Pray as if you have seen me pray. We have to learn how to pray properly. There's no exception. This is a command from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanallah, if you were to imagine a young man who is 37 years old, he started praying according to the sunnah when he was seven, five daily prayers, never missed the salat, mashallah. So he has now 30 years of experience, 30 years of praying. If you were to add it up using the Hijri, Hijri calendar, that means he's prayed about 54,000 Fard prayers in those 30 years. 54,000. If you were to add his Sunnah prayers, Taraweeh and Ramadan, all of this, the, and you would see that he's probably prayed about more than 100,000 prayers. 100,000 prayers, but yet... He still doesn't know how to pray. He still has no clue about what he's saying in the prayer. The meanings of what he's saying. He recites the same small surahs time and time again. And he doesn't know the meanings of these surahs. He says the adhkar and the salat and he doesn't know the meanings of it. He makes the movements and he doesn't understand why he makes these movements. Or what are the meanings of these movements in the salat? 
Imagine this same individual. He's a devoted Muslim. MashaAllah, he prays five times a day. And he's from the Muslims who are not shy about their prayer. Because nowadays, we have many shy Muslims. If he's around non-Muslims, non-Muslim colleagues, he say, I'll combine later. He's a bit shy to get up and pray at work or when he's around people who don't pray. When he travels, he's in a non-Muslim country, and instead of getting up and praying in front of the people in the airport, he's a bit shy, I'll pray when I reach my destination. SubhanAllah. But the true Muslim, the one who's the devoted Muslim, he'll get up and pray, whether it be in an airport, whether it be in a petrol station, when he's traveling, wherever he is. He gets up and he prays, and he's proud of his prayer. But imagine if that same devoted Muslim were to be asked by a non-Muslim, what are the meanings of the movements that you're making? What are the meanings of what you're saying in the prayer? And many Muslims, if they were to be honest in their answer, they would say, well, the movements, I found my mother and father praying like this, so I prayed like them. In regards to what I'm saying and what I'm reading, I have no clue what it means. Imagine what this non-Muslim is going to think now about the Muslims. What a bunch of idiots. Let's be frank. What a bunch of idiots. This guy's been praying for how many years? 30 years? And you don't know why, why you're praying like this or how to pray properly? You don't know the meanings of what you're doing, what you're saying? SubhanAllah. But this is the reality of so many of the Muslims. If you were to ask many Muslims, why do you pray? They don't have the answer. You hear some strange answers sometimes. <laughs> or might, you might hear half of the answer sometimes. It's a command from Allah. I'm a Muslim. I have to fulfill this command. It's dangerous for me as a Muslim to leave the prayer. Because as the Prophet ﷺ told us, it's the backbone of the religion. Meaning if I leave the prayer, my religion collapses. The Prophet ﷺ told us that the one who doesn't pray has committed an act of disbelief. Meaning that if I don't pray, I'm going to leave the fold of Islam. And this, or he might say maybe, I pray to get the reward, so Allah will reward me. And all of these answers, they are correct, but it's only half of the answer. It's not the true essence of the prayer. The true reason why we pray is because we're Muslims. And what does it mean to be a Muslim? It means that I submit and I surrender to Allah. I submit and surrender to Allah willingly, out of my own free will, my own choice. This is why I pray. And this brings me closer to Allah. And I am in need of this prayer. And once we realize, my dear brothers and sisters, our need for the prayer, it will transform us from being Muslims who pray hoping to get the reward and out of fear of the punishment of not praying to being a Muslim who prays because he loves to pray and he finds peace and tranquility in the prayer. He's benefiting from the prayer. He feels how much he's in need of that prayer. The reality of so many of us is that we pray the prayer of the munafiq. We pray the prayer of the munafiq, of the hypocrite. How did Allah describe them in the Quran? وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا That if they get up to offer the prayer, they come to the prayer kusala, lazy. It's heavy upon them. And how many of us, let's be honest with ourselves, how many of us fall into this category? How many of us we find it heavy when we get up to pray? It's time for Salat again. Bismillah. We know we have to do it. We have to fulfill this religious commitment, this pillar of Islam. We get up and we do it, but we find it heavy. Why do we find it so heavy and so difficult? There's many reasons why. 
But I'm going to mention four of the reasons. The first two I've already alluded to. We don't know how to pray properly. We don't know the rulings of the prayer. And we don't understand what we're saying and what we're doing. It's become a custom, just movements that we're going through. If you don't understand why you're praying, you're not going to benefit from the prayer. You're not going to find pleasure in the prayer. And secondly, so these are the first two reasons. We don't know how to pray and we don't understand what we're saying, what we're doing. A brother came to me one time and he asked me, he said, Allah said, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَ عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكِرُ That the prayer, it forbids that which is immoral and that which is evil. And we are falling into that which is immoral and that which is evil and we're praying five times a day. Why? Why is the salat not forbidding us from falling into these acts? And it's a very beautiful question. I said to him, because the reality is, we're not really praying. We're going through the movements. We're fulfilling the religious obligation upon ourselves by praying the five daily prayers, but we're not really praying. We're not finding the true essence of the prayer. We're not feeling the impact upon ourselves because we're just going through the movements. We're thinking here and there. We're not focusing. We get into the salat, Allahu Akbar, and we travel there. We go there. We're thinking about this and that. And then, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. We don't know what we said or what was said. We're in and out just like that, just going through the movements, up and down. So we're not really praying. That's why it's not having any impact on us. The third reason why is we haven't realized our need for the prayer. When we look into the Qur'an and into the sunnah of our beloved Prophet wasallam, we realize our need for the prayer. The life that we live, it's a challenge. It's difficult. How do we deal with these difficulties, these difficulties and these challenges? Allah made it clear to us in the Quran. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salat. Seek assistance through patience and prayer. Our beloved Prophet wasallam, when he would face difficulties, he would race to the prayer. The prayer is your sila, your connection, your direct connection with Allah. You're facing difficulties, prostrate, put your head onto the ground and open up and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ described the prayer as the coolness of his eyes. He used to say to Bilal, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Let us find relaxation through the prayer. That's when you understand the true essence of the prayer, that you're going to the prayer to relax. Allah, Al Khaliq. Your creator, he created you and he knows that you need these prayers. You need this connection with Allah. Imam Sa'id ibn Musayyib, he said that the adhan was never made for the prayer, or the time, he said, the time never came for the prayer, except I was already preparing and that I was missing the prayer. He was yearning for it, he wanted the prayer. And he said, for 30 years the adhan wasn't made except for I was in the masjid already, khalas. He's finding pleasure in the prayer. And once we realize our need and our pleasure, that's when we're going to benefit from the prayer. In the, prayer. the fourth reason is the nature of the prayer. What is the nature of the prayer? Allah made it clear in the Quran. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرًا That indeed the prayer is difficult. It's difficult, it's challenging. But there's an exception. There's an exception to it being difficult. Except for the ones who are the khashi'een, the ones who have, have the khushu, they're humbly submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These individuals, the salat is not difficult for them. The salat is easy for them. They find pleasure in it. All the time when we lecture about the prayer, people come and ask us, how can we find khushu in the salat? What can we do to find khushu? What are the tools? But the reality is, even if I were to give you the tools of how to find khushu, 
There's a key element. If you don't have it, you'll never find the khushu in the salat. And that is your relationship with the law outside of the prayer. Your relationship with the law at all times. If your heart has been corrupted and polluted with the filth of sin and disobedience to Allah, then your heart's not going to find the khushu in the prayer. You have to fix that before you enter into the prayer. And once you find and you purify your heart, that's when you're going to be able to truly benefit from the prayer. You purified your heart and then you realize your need for the prayer. That's when you're going to find true meaning to the salat. Barakallahu li lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunna wa naf'ani wa yaakum bima fihi ma min al-ayati wa al-hikma aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Bismillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyya al-mustafa wa ba'd My dear brothers and sisters in Islam I was listening to one of the scholars recently who told his experience when he went in for a routine and very easy operation where he was supposed to stay in the hospital for two to three days. But due to a medical mistake, he ended up being hospitalized for eight months. During this time, he reflected on many things, very beneficial things. And from the things he talked about was his relationship with the Qur'an and his relationship with the Salat. And he said, I realized that even though I've been giving da'wah for almost all my life, and he's in his 60s, he said that many of the times I don't focus on the prayer enough. Many times I'm in a hurry because I have a lecture. I have a TV show. So I go too fast in the prayer. And he said, I realized this mistake. And he said, alhamdulillah, this sickness that I had was actually a blessing for me because it made me better in my prayer. Once we realize and understand what we're saying in the prayer, my dear brothers and sisters, look at ourselves. And can you imagine, we gave the example of someone who's been praying for 30 years. What about the brother or sister who's been praying for 40 years, 50 years, and they have no clue what they're saying? If it were to come to the worldly affairs, if we were to buy a new phone, we make sure that we know how to use it properly. We read the manual. We research in detail. We go on YouTube, we watch a, how to use the phone. What are the features of the phone? We ask someone to teach us. But now we're just going to buy the phone and put it in our pocket. There are some individuals who do that. They have these fancy phones and don't know how to use them. But usually speaking, most people take the time to learn how to use them. When you go to work and you have a profession, you make sure you know what you're doing. Or else you're going to lose your job. But here's the salat. And I was speaking to the Muslims who are praying five times a day and don't know how to pray properly still. They don't know the rulings of the prayer. How many Muslims, when you come into the salat, you come into the masjid, and they're raising their feet up on the ground, not placing their toes on the ground when they make sujood. And this is from the seven limbs that the Prophet ﷺ ordered us to put on the ground. What happens to his prayer? His prayer is batila. It's nullified. It's not accepted because he didn't put, his, put the limbs on the ground. But yet many people, they have this, the feet hanging in the air as they're praying, subhanAllah. But if he had learned and took out the time to learn how to pray properly, he would know that's what he needs to do in his prayer. This is not acceptable that we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day and it's not correct. We pray to Allah five times a day and we don't pray in accordance to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa We pray as we saw Mama and Baba doing, that's it. Even if there's many mistakes in how they used to pray. We take the same mistakes. And then we teach our kids the same mistakes. Sallu kama yusalli. The command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pray as if you have seen me pray. The khutbah today, because many people ask, we always want to focus on how to encourage the ones who are negligent in their prayer. How to encourage the ones who are not praying. The khutbah today, we're talking to the brothers and sisters who are praying. The ones who are devoted in their prayer, but they're not really benefiting from their prayer. Because they're not focusing on truly submitting to Allah in the prayer by understanding what they're doing, what they're saying. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to make the commitment from today onwards 
that we're going to start focusing on the prayer, understanding what are we saying, what are we doing, what is the sunnah, taking out that time to learn the prayer properly. There's no excuse. What are you going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah when you've come and you've fulfilled your prayer but it hasn't been correct? You prayed alhamdulillah, that's a blessing, but you didn't do it properly. You prayed alhamdulillah, but you didn't truly benefit from the prayer. Because the reality was you didn't understand, you went through the movements only. Remember in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Qad aflah al-Mu'minun, that the believers have been successful. The first thing that Allah mentions from them, the ones who are in their prayer, khashi'un, the ones who have the khushu' in their prayer. And the last of their characteristics, that they are the ones who are close guarding their prayers. The first characteristic that they're khashi'un, they're focusing, they understand the meanings. There's no way you can find a khushu in prayer if you don't understand what you're saying. Imagine learning Chinese now and me making dua in Chinese. How's it going to benefit me? It might sound cool, huh? but how's it going to benefit me? I don't know what I'm saying. It's nothing in the heart. The same thing now, you're reading these surahs, you're reading these, these, these duas and this dhikr and you don't know what it means. It's not going to impact the heart. Therefore, we have to take out the time to learn properly how to pray and understand the meanings of what we're doing if we truly want to benefit from our prayer in this life and then in the next when we get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for praying properly. Allah ordered us to establish the prayer. Establish meaning pray it correctly. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي بواحد صلى الله عليها بعشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وانعم على نبينا محمد وارض اللهم من الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وانسائر الصحابة أجمعين